on this Tuesday of Holy Week, hear now some words found in the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say, Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, we have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus answered them, The light is with you a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overcome you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. People were coming to Jesus because they had heard that Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. But when they found Jesus, it seems that Jesus wanted to talk about death. One writer says that Jesus here confronts his glory, that is his death and his resurrection, with the confidence of the one who has sent him into the world. The writer continues, he does not welcome death as some sort of deranged madman, but neither does he fear that death will destroy him and God's purpose. Just the opposite. The all-too-human Jesus is troubled by the thought of his death, yet at the same time is comforted that the name of God will be glorified through it. Endings can sometimes be painful, can't they? The death of a loved one, or, or the prospect of our own death for that matter, can fill us with grief and anxiety. Saying goodbye to friends when they move away, or finding ourselves needing to let go of a job, or a measure of our independence, or a beloved home we've lived in for decades, those are hard things for us. And goodness knows, it's hard to let go of traditions that we've held to for a long, long time, even when they no longer bring us joy or serve the same purpose that they used to. It's hard to let them go. Endings, transitions, they can be hard. As Jesus journeyed toward the end of his earthly ministry, 
He was troubled, I think, by that, but he was not fearful, for he trusted in God's love and God's power. Troubling things happen to us. Some things do come to an end, but because of what God has done in Jesus, I believe we, like Jesus, can face anything with the confidence that God is near, that God hears us, and that God loves us. I'll close our devotion today with a prayer. It was written by Benjamin Weir. You might remember Weir. He was a Presbyterian minister, missionary, who uh, was in Lebanon, who was kidnapped off the streets in May of 1984. He was freed some 16 months later, but he wrote, Lord, I remember your promise, and I think it applies to me too. I've done nothing to deserve it, but receive it as a free gift. I'm in need. I need you. I need your assurance and guidance to be faithful to you in this situation. Teach me what I need to learn. Deliver me from this place and this captivity, if it is your will. If it is not your will to set me free, help me to accept whatever is involved. Show me your gifts, he wrote, and enable me to recognize them as coming from you, he prayed. Thank you, he said, for your encouraging presence. Praise be to you. May you experience, even in this Holy Week, the power and love of God in Jesus Christ lived and died and lives again for each of us.